From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India is a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides on the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Lipakshi and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give a glimpse of a country's diversity. Spring with its arrival has brought all kinds of excitement in Nagaland's Kohima as celebrations for the much-awaited Along festival began in the region. Witnessing a joyful aura, the capital city welcomed the spring season with open arms as the people of the Konyak tribe celebrated the festival with great zeal and colour. Konyak people in Kohima turned the spirit around as they draped their traditional attires and geared up for celebrations. Take a look. Decked up in traditional tribal attires, people of the Konyak tribe sang and danced to the beat of drums as they gathered to celebrate Elong, the premier festival of the community. This year, the festival was celebrated at the Naga Heritage Village in Kisama district. The festival was attended by Nagaland's Minister for Tourism and Higher Education Temjen Inma Along, who was also the chief guest at the event. A very happy Aulin festival to all the Konyak brothers and sisters. This is truly a, you know, one of the best celebrated festivals among the tribes of Nagaland. And the Konyaks have been very uh, fervent to celebrate Owling all over the state and today we are also happy to know that in Kohima we are celebrating the Owling festival in Kohima where the confluence of not only the Angamis but also the confluence of all the tribes of Nagaland are here and today is Owling here the Konyak Union Kohima has done a tremendous job and it's a wonderful thing and the food was great so it's called the Mopong Hong Kong Union's food no? So it was really wonderful. The Elong Festival celebrates the onset of spring and locals seek divine blessings for good health and a bountiful harvest. Celebrated for almost a week, a number of different rituals take place during the course of the festival. A melodious singing performance was also organized which was thoroughly enjoyed by the audiences. The celebrations are held in the first week of April, which usually coincides with the beginning of the Konyak New Year. This Aulin festival, it's welcoming the spring season and especially we celebrate this Aulang festival seeking blessing for our good health and a bountiful harvest and it is actually a pre-harvest festival. The first three days of the Aulang festival are spent preparing for the festival by weaving traditional cloths, collecting the animals that will be sacrificed and preparing food and rice beer for the festival. The most significant day of the Elong is the fourth day, known as Lingunya, when all Konyak tribe members dress up in their finest colourful traditional tribal clothing and jewellery. The festival's final two days are referred to as Linganya and Lingshanya. This time will be spent with family, cleaning the village as a whole, as well as individual homes. The identity of the people depends on the culture, the custom and the tradition. That is why we cannot ignore the identity. So by celebrating this Aulin festival, it helps us to come together, to know each other. And even the youngsters, they come to know what our tradition is. It gives a good impact by celebrating this Aulin festival for the younger generation. Of Nagaland's 17 officially recognized tribes, the Konyak people are the most numerous and well known due to their historical practice of headhunting. 
The Eilong festival not only celebrates the arrival of spring season, but is also a beautiful show of the Konya community's culture and lifestyle. Moving on, Indian festivals, a beat of Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs or Christians have been long acting as a bridge between different faiths and communities. These cultural fiestas not just bring people closer, but also teach them to respect each other's faith and beliefs. We got to witness many such instances during the Ram Navmi celebrations, where people cutting across religious lines came together to share the festive joy and support each other. Let's take a look. Ram Navmi is one of the most important and cherished festivals for Hindus across the world. It celebrates the birth of Lord Ram, who according to the Hindu scriptures, is the seventh avatar of Lord Vishnu. Recently, in a remarkable gesture of hospitality and brotherhood, Muslims in Siliguri city of West Bengal distributed thousands of water bottles to devotees of Lord Ram, who gathered to take out the Ram Navmi procession. According to the locals, it was the desire to further the message of brotherhood and harmony that Muslims led the initiative to support Hindu devotees, carrying out the Ram Navmi procession through a number of cities. जो आज राम भक्त जो जा रहे हैं उन लोगों को आज हम लोगों ने 7000 बोतल पानी पिलाया है और 3000 जो फ्रूटी जो जूस होता है बच्चों में आज हम लोगों ने वितरित किया है उद्देश्य तो यही है कि देखिए देश में जो हमारा एकता है भाईचारा है मोहब्बत है इखलाक है ये सारा कुछ बना रहे इसी को लेके आज हम लोगों ने ये छोटा सा प्रोग्राम किया है कि आज हमारे देश में बहुत सारे लोग हैं जो नफरत फैलाने की कोशिश कर रहे हैं बट हमारा हिंदुस्तान ऐसा नहीं है हमारा हिंदुस्तान सभी जाति धर्म देश भाषा सभी को लेकर बना है तो सब लोग अगर हम लोग मिलकर एक साथ अगर कोई काम करते हैं तो वो बढ़िया होता है तो यही उद्देश्य है कि हम लोग सब एक है एक साथ मिलकर हम लोगों को रहना चाहिए a total of 7,000 water bottles and 3,000 juice bottles were distributed to the Hindu devotees by Muslims during the procession to help them through the heat of the day. Ram Navmi in this region of the country is celebrated with much fervor and displays exemplary brotherhood among the communities every year. Despite the proclivity with which the friction between Hindus and Muslims is underscored, the fact remains and stands tall that Muslims and Hindus have lived together as one and continue to do so. In Siliguri, we make Ram Navmi every year. This time we are making it. We are making it with love, Hindu brothers, Muslim brothers, and we are making it with Ram Navmi. We are coming from a very long time. In the Venus Moon, we saw that the Muslim brothers were giving us water. So we are making it with love. In Siliguri, the brothers are making it with love. All over India, the brother of Hindu Muslim has seen this in Venus Mode. It is stories like these that as a matter of fact accentuate the long-standing unity and brotherhood in India. Be it Eid, Diwali, Guru Parab or Christmas, the people in India celebrate all festivals with great fervor. And now a roundup of some of the major stories that made news recently. Hollywood stars Zindaya and American supermodel Gigi Hadid wore glamorous Indian sarees as they walked the red carpet at the launch of Indian businesswoman Nita Ammani's cultural center in the country's entertainment capital Mumbai. Zindaya walked in a deep blue sari and her Spider-Man no Way Home co-star Tom Holland also graced the red carpet. Hadid wore a white and golden colored sari with gold bangles at the gala. Oscar-winning Spanish actress Penelope Cruz, American pop star Nick Jonas and a host of Bollywood stars also arrived wearing stunning outfits at the photo call for the Nita Mukesh Ammani Cultural Center. The center is a multidisciplinary culture space that aims to showcase the country's cultural and traditional history through arts. Christian devotees observed Palm Sunday in India's southern Kerala state by offering prayers at various churches to commemorate Jesus Christ's entry into the city of Jerusalem before getting arrested and crucified. 
Palm Sunday marks the day the Gospels say Jesus rode into Jerusalem and was hailed by the people only to be crucified five days later. Today is the called Palm Sunday. It marks the end of the public life of Jesus Christ who has entered Jerusalem city as he was aware that he will be caught and will be killed by Jews. In that way he entered Jerusalem. He was greeted and welcomed by the people of Jerusalem and Jews with the Shaitin Kombukal, that is palm leaves. Here it is called palm leaves. That marks the end of the public life of Jesus Christ. Devotees in southern Tiruvananthapuram and Kotayam cities gathered in huge numbers on to take part in the social prayer ceremonies. They held palm leaves and took part in processions to mark the occasion. Palm Sunday is followed by Good Friday and then Easter, the most important day on the Christian liturgical calendar. After the Mass, some devotees hang the leaves inside their houses in the belief that it will ward off evil spirits. The Holy Week, which begins on Palm Sunday and ends on Easter Sunday, marks the last week of Lent, during which Christians are called on to fast, pray and give alms to the needy. Hollywood actor Richard Madden and Bollywood actress turned Hollywood personality Priyanka Chopra Jonas promoted their upcoming spy series Citadel as they screened its trailer in India's showbiz capital of Mumbai. Madden and Jonas were accompanied at the newser by Vice President of Prime Videos India Gaurav Gandhi and Director of Subscription Video On Demand Business of Prime Videos India Sushant Sareen. I think we're used to, to television and film being 80% drama, 20% action, or 80% action, 20% drama. And what we've tried to do is 100% of both. And for me, that's something I've not seen on television before or, or, or tried to do before. And for that one reason, I'd say, please tune in and watch it. Because when you really fully combine those two things, you end up getting something electric all the way through it, not just the peaks and troughs of action or the, the, the lows of the drama. It's a real combined, beautiful thing. Chopra, who will be portraying the role of Nadia Sin, said keeping up with the twists and turns the show has to offer was the most challenging part of her about filming Citadel. Directed by Russo Brothers, Citadel narrates the tale of two agents Mason Kane and Nadia Sin of the global spy agency Citadel, which crashes down. The spy thriller series is set to release on Amazon Prime Video on April 28. India is a country where Sufism has not just flourished but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. Even today, the teachings of these saints informed the lives of people and this was very well reflected at the shrine of St. Bhavagore in a small town in Gujarat, where people of all faiths assembled to seek the blessings of the holy saint. Situated on a hilltop in the small town of Paruch in Gujarat, the shrine of Bhavagore has been serving as a sinister of religious harmony for generations. Located in the Ratanpur village, the shrine witnesses a rush of devotees throughout the year who throng the darga for fulfillment of their wishes. The devotees believe with all that, acknowledging the shrine faithfully opens the doorway to miracles and resolutions to problems. Here, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Isai, Darek Dharam ke log apni manta leke aate hain aur dada Allah ke faslo karam se unki har koi manta puri ho jati hai aur puri ho jane ke baad jo bhi rism rewaz hai uske parmane wo apni mannate yahan pe utarte hain It's been said that Baba Ghor came to Bharuj city around 700 years ago from Makkah The shrine is said to cure all kinds of evil eye 
and fulfill the wishes of devotees. It is believed that visiting the shrine on Thursdays has special significance and people of various religious communities could be seen thronging the shrine on Thursdays for fulfillment of wishes. यहाँ आने से मतलब सबका दुख दूर होता है हजरत साहब के पास जो भी आता है उसका दुख दूर हो जाता है पांच गुरुवार सात गुरुवार ज़्यादा भी लग सकता है दुख दूर में लेकिन हो जाएगा दुख ना सबका भलाई ही होता है इट इज़ द इंडियन लैंड दैट टेक्स प्राइड इन बीइंग होम टू पीपल फ्रॉम कम्युनिटीज डिफरिंग फ्रॉम ईच अदर इन मैटर एंड कलर एंड येट शेयरिंग द कॉमन स्पिरिट ऑफ इंडियन सिविलाइजेशन डिफाइन इन द टर्म्स ऑफ वनस एंड को एग्जिस्टेंस Baba Ghor's Dargah continue to bear witness and set a benchmark for the standards of communal harmony that every idol society must aspire for. And now we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our section of World in Focus. The Louis Vuitton Foundation Museum launched an exhibition on the artistic collaboration between John Michael Basquiat and Andy Warhol between 1983 and 1985, consisting of more than 70 of the 160 works that resulted from their work together. Andy Warhol and John Michael Basquiat met in October 1982 when their art dealer Bruno Bischoff Berger photographed them together. Basquiat returned home. and reproduced the photograph in less than 2 hours he took it to warhol who proposed to begin a collaboration the exhibition is the largest ever devoted to this singular collaboration featuring over 300 works and documents to reconstruct the art scene of downtown new york in the 1980s individual works by each artist are also presented some of these works are among the greatest of their respective careers the exhibition includes major works such as the 10 meter canvas african masks and the monumental sculpture 10 punching bags last supper 10 boxing bags hung in a row that reveal their approach to death on each of the bags the face of christ inspired by leonardo da vinci's the last supper drawn by warhol who was a believer with the word judge and a crown of thorns added by basquiat two generations move on two artists at two stages of their careers the radiant child of the 1980s at the height of her career at a time when less flamboyantly than warhol's trajectory tarnished by the excess of mechanical productions of worldly portraits the exhibition on view until august 28 2023 at foundation louis vuitton in paris brings together works never before presented in europe and has benefited from the contribution of various institutions lenders and collections to compose the selection Tunisian models in their 60s strutted down the catwalk to exhibit traditional dresses called jaba in a twist to mainstream fashion shows challenging beauty stereotypes the fashion show aimed to boost the confidence of older women احنا حابين نخرجوا على المألوف المألوف اللي هو كان الأعراض الأزياء هو الكل للشباب لكن احنا حابين نجيبوا المرأة اللي هي سنها كبير وحابين نلبسوها باش تشعر اللي هي تنجم تعطيه وتنجم تلبس وتنجم تخرج في حلة القديمة اللي هي ثقافتنا modeling a long loose fitting garment that is typically worn by Tunisian women the older women also dance to a clapping audience traditionally associated with modesty and religious devotion the fashion show turned the jaba into a symbol of style with vibrant colors and intricate patterns showcasing the beauty and diversity of Tunisian culture High school students and their tutors in Cyprus have developed a prototype robot powered with ChatGPT artificial intelligence technology to harness and improve teaching experiences in the classroom. Named A Einstein like Einstein, but starting with AI, the squat robot created in a collaboration of three Pascal schools in Cyprus 
stands roughly the size of a small adult and looks like sculpted version of the Michelin Man. The mission of the robot uh, is to actually incorporate it into lesson plans so teachers can actually visit Einstein and incorporate like a lesson plan or a curriculum to understand actually what Einstein was doing. And it's a very interactive experience. Uh, students can ask him questions, he can answer back, or he can even facilitate uh, to teachers to actually deliver a lesson more effectively. It is powered with ChatGPT, a chatbot developed by US firm OpenAI and backed by computer giant Microsoft. A screen for a face tries to mimic human features with blinks and frowns. He does not have a favorite movie since it was before his time, he says, but he enjoys reading science books and spending leisure time with his violin. Teachers say the ultimate purpose of A. Einstein is to incorporate into lesson plans. At the end, India is taking huge strides towards being a superpower that is not only economically thriving, but also leading the charge to become self-reliant. The flourishing aviation industry in India needs special mention for its contribution to the country's economic might. Join us as we take you to witness India's contemporary feats in the aviation industry. A report. In a historic deal, Tata Sons led Air India placed a massive order of 470 Boeing and Airbus aircrafts last month to meet the sudden surge in the aviation demand in the country. The deal, worth around 100 billion USD, comprises the purchase of a wide range of aircrafts that will cater to the needs of passengers across the economic ladder and of travelers around the world. These deals with Boeing and Airspace were two of the biggest civil aviation deals the world has witnessed to date. It is an opportunity not only for uh, the American economy and for workers here in this country, but it's an opportunity for the Indian people as well. It's an opportunity to deepen what is already uh, a, a uh, profoundly um, uh, intertwined relationship uh, based on um, shared interests, based on shared values, uh, based on our deep economic ties. And with the announcement between Boeing and Air India yesterday, uh, those ties are all the deeper. India is one of the most promising aviation markets in the world. After a brief pandemic-induced lull in her aviation activity in 2020 and 2021, India researched strongly in 2022 with a 47% rise of air passenger traffic, totaling approximately 123 million people. Market and consumer data specialist Statista recorded that 22 million international passengers touched down at Indian airports in the financial year 2022. India has around 400 airports and airstrips, and of which 153 were operational by the end of 2022. The Indian aviation sector is projected to tread parallel to Indian economic growth in general, which is well placed to grow fastest amongst the major global economies in the next one decade. Today, Bharat is the third biggest aviation market in the world. The Uran Yojana जिस तरह देश के मध्यम वर्ग के सपनों को पूरा किया है वो तो वाकई किसी यूनिवर्सिटी के लिए एकेडमिक वर्ल्ड के लिए अध्ययन का विषय है The government's proactive measures such as capping airfares coupled with a rapid expansion in budget airlines fleets and a consistently growing middle income group in India have greatly contributed to the success of the Indian aviation sector. India is also home to one of the most affordable air markets in the world. These are some of the reasons that many experts around the world believe that Indian carriers can not only become a challenger to Middle Eastern carrier hegemony, but can also surpass them to become the most preferred air carriers globally. Indigo, the biggest domestic air carrier, which flies nearly 1,800 flights a day, is also set to expand its fleet size. 
As many as 500 aircrafts are on order and will join the Indigo fleet soon. The number of airports are increasing. Airlines are also going to increase. So our aviation industry, which is growing at such a good speed, is a beacon of uh, uh, hope to the entire world. A remarkable aviation journey, which is poised to grow further, is an indication of India's general economic health. Per capita income levels have registered a significant growth and a tremendous trajectory is predicted for the future as well. The entirety of Brand India is booming, as are her individual sectors. Observers say India's aviation sector is one which will greatly promote her reputation around the world in years to come. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at anin.com. I'm your host, Lipakshi, and it's goodbye from the entire production team.